All right, let's talk about properties of exponents. Okay, so it says here, perform the indicated operations. Now, these are operations that you already know about. So this is a review. So we're going to talk about the rules that we've already dealt with. We're going to multiply 2 times 3. Notice that you don't see a plus or a minus in there, so that means we're multiplying. So 2 times 3 is 6. Then you've got x to the 3rd times x to the 8th, which is x to the 11th. Remember, add those together. Then you've got y to the 6th times y to the 7th, which is y to the 13th power. And this is it. <clears throat> All right, on part two, we're going to take each of these terms and we're going to raise each term to the third power. So you've got negative two to the third power, you've got x to the third power, and you've got y to the third power. Now you can do this math. So negative two times negative two times negative two is negative eight x cubed y cubed. There you go. Okay, so you might want to read through this. You might want to hit pause here. Okay, here's another rule. So this says whenever we are dividing and you have the same base, then what you do is you subtract your exponents. So an example of this would be 2 to the 5th power over 2 to the 3rd power. What you really have up on top is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. And on the bottom, in the denominator, you have 2 times 2 times 2. Now we can mark out factors of these. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So what you're left with are those 2's, and they are on top. So you're left with 2 squared, which is 4. So you would just easily subtract those, and you'd end up with that answer as well. All right, so whenever you are simplifying, <clears throat> simplify the coefficients. So 6 over 4 simplifies to be 3 over 2. Now, look at this. We've got the same bases here, so you want to subtract your exponents. So you've got x to the 9 minus 5, which is 4. So this is your final answer. All right, so take a look at this. So we've got 12 divided by 4, which is 3. Then you've got x to the 6th, and it's like bases down here at the bottom, and that's a 1 right there. So you do 6 minus 1, which is 5. Then we've got y to the 8th and y to the 7th down there. So you have just plain old y. So that's your final answer. That's your simplified answer. All right, so this is just helping you understand the meaning of 2 to the 0 power. And why is that 1? Well, if you take a look at this, you've got 2 to the 4th is 16. 2 to the 3rd is really your previous answer divided by 2, which is 8. So 2 to the 2nd power, you take your previous answer, which is 8, and divide it by your base, which is 2, and you get 4. 2 to the first power, you take your previous answer, which was 4, divide it by your base, and you get 2. So here's where we get the, the 2 to the 0 is 1. So 2 to the 0 power, you take your previous answer, which is 2, and you divide it by your base, and you get 1. So that's the, the pattern that keeps going on, and we can talk about negative exponents later, but it keeps going in that same pattern. You take your previous answer, and you divide it by that base. And that's how you get these things that just, I think they look kind of crazy, like 2 to the negative 1 power is 1 half. Again, we'll talk about this later. All right, so this brings us to this rule. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So if you have some nasty-looking problem, let's say you've got 4x cubed y over 2x squared y, and you raise that entire thing to the zero power, 
You don't even have to simplify the stuff inside the parentheses. You can just tell me that answer is 1. Anything raised to the 0 power is 1. If you're given 4,372 and you raise that to the 0 power, that answer is 1. Okay, so this rule says that if you have, notice the parentheses go all the way down to the denominator, if you have a fraction and those parentheses go all the way down and you raise it to the n power, then you raise each term inside to the n power. Okay, so on number one, the parentheses, they do go all the way down to the denominator, so you've got x to the eighth over y to the eighth. On part two, you have x to the third power over two to the third power, which is x to the third over eight. Okay, on this page we've got a power raised to a power. So what you do there, you multiply your powers together. So if I were to have four to the fifth power raised to the seventh power. That means I'm going to multiply the 5 and the 7 together, so I've got 4 to the 35th power. Alright, so let's look at number 1 here. I've got x to the second power raised to the seventh power. Now what this really means is this, x squared times 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 x squared. And how many of those do I have? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. So I have x to the 14th power. The fast way, just multiply those powers together. So we're going to do that on this one. Just multiply those together. x to the 40th power. Okay, so we're going to simplify this. So I'm going to raise each of these to the third power. So I've got 2 to the third power. Now I've got x to the eighth to the third power. When you have a power raised to a power, you multiply. So I've got x to the 24th power, and then y to the 15th power. Now I want to simplify this 2 to the third, which is 8. And there's my final answer there. Okay, so on this one, <clears throat> the only thing I'm raising to the second power right here is this. Notice how this parenthesis says I'm only doing what's inside this set of parentheses. So I've got 2x to the 7th, all I did was rewrite that, times, now I've got 4 squared, and I've got x to the 8th power because I multiplied this 4 and this 2 together. Now I've got to simplify this. So I've got, I'm going to move this 4 over here by this 2, so I've got 2 times, the 4 squared is actually 16, and then I'm going to combine my x's, and now I'm going to multiply the 2 times the 16. And there we go, we're done. Okay, on number 3, I'm going to do 8 divided by 2, which is 4. I've got, I've got to combine these, so I've got x to the seventh on top, and because I already divided the two and the eight to get, to get me four, I'm still left with that. So now look at this, the x to the seventh, they cancel out, so my final answer is just four. Alright, so on this, I'm going to raise each of these in this set of parentheses to the third power because look, the parentheses go all the way down to the denominator. So I've got 2 to the third power, x to the twelfth power, over 3 to the third power, y to the twenty-first power. So I've got 8, x to the twelfth power, over 27, y to the 21st power. And I can't simplify anything else. That's as good as this thing gets. Now on number two, I want you to notice these parentheses do not extend to the denominator. So I'm only raising the numerator to the fifth power. So I've got two to the fifth, 
x to the 15th, y to the 5th, over x to the 8th, y. I just rewrote the denominator. So now I'm going to simplify. <clears throat> 2 to the 5th power is 32. The x to the 15th and the x to the 8th, I can subtract those, so I get x to the 7th power. y to the 5th and y, remember that's a 1 right there, so I get y to the 4th power. And there we go. All right, I hope this helps out. Let me know if you have any issues.